Well, since my Super Sentai games retrospective was very well received, and since I've gotten so many requests for this one, I figured I'd do this as well. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part one of Kamen Rider games. In this part, I'm going to take a look at Kamen Rider games released on the Famicom, Famicom Disk System, Super Famicom, and the Game Boy. Now before I begin this review, some of my fans and subscribers who are not Kamen Rider and Tokusatsu fans may be asking, what the fuck is Kamen Rider? Kamen Rider is a popular Japanese superhero franchise that started all the way back in 1971 with the original Kamen Rider. Originally based on the Skullman manga by Shotaro Shinomori, Kamen Rider's basic premise is about a man who gets kidnapped by the main villains, turned into a cyborg, and somehow or some way escapes from those villains. Using his given powers, he would transform or henshin into Kamen Rider. Now it may look cheesy to some people at first, but believe me, this series is epic with great storylines, great characters, awesome action scenes, and just all around fun to watch. The original series spawned many sequels, movies, and spin-offs, and the franchise kept getting better and better over the years, although it did go a completely new direction once it entered the new millennium. And like many other popular franchises, Kamen Rider will also spawn several video game releases. The very first Kamen Rider game was released on the Famicom in 1988, and it was called Kamen Rider Club Gekitatsu Shocker Land. But even though this was the very first Kamen Rider game, it left a really bad first impression. How bad is it? Let's find out. So the game starts off with an explosion followed by a seizure inducing screen and the first three Kamen Riders, of course, Ichigo, Nigo, and V3. Now you know a game is bad when it starts off with a seizure inducing screen at the very beginning, kind of like a certain Transformers game. So anyway, you have three riders to select, and of all of them, V3 is the only rider in this game that's remotely decent. I'll get to him later, but right now, let's start with Ichigo. Now what you're seeing here is an RPG slash platformer of sorts. This wouldn't be so bad if it was actually fun to play. The objective of each level is to reach the goal with at least 20,000 yen. In order to collect 20,000 yen, you can either break boxes to see if you're lucky, go inside certain stores, or defeat shocker grunts, either by going into battle, which I'll get to later, or by precisely landing right above their head and punching them. You'd think that would be easy to do, right? Fuck no, it's not. First off, the controls in this game are absolutely terrible! Jumping in this game is extremely awkward. When you're in a narrow spot, you literally have to tap the direction you want on the D-pad rapidly in order to jump on another platform. The only way you'll be able to jump smoothly is only when you're in a wide area. Who the fuck thought this was a good idea? I mean, what retard at Bandai actually approved of this shit? And if you're not careful, you'll end up with shit like this. I swear, this shit is the most annoying music ever in any video game. And believe me, you will experience this a lot. It makes your ears fucking bleed like fucking hell. Shut the fuck up already! And if you think that's bad, it gets worse when you go into battle. Much, much worse. Now you think this game would have pretty standard attacks as well as your special attacks, right? No. You can use attacks like Rider Punch and Rider Kick, but pay attention to your tech bar, because it will deplete if you use those attacks too much. So what happens when you don't use your special attacks? I'll give you a hint. It doesn't involve punching or kicking. Come, 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 come
Yes! 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 Oh, my thumbs are tired. That's right. You literally have to shove your opponent to the wall, and you literally have to button mash. Again, who was the retard developer that thought this was a brilliant idea? I seriously would like to know. My fingers got sore and tired after playing this game for a while because of this shit. This is the stupidest shit ever in any RPG, and I mean any RPG. And you know what else? The grunts sometimes stab you in the middle of shoving, and a good portion of your energy is depleted once that happens. So do yourself a favor. Do not, and I mean do not, get into battle with anyone. Try your damn best to avoid it and just punch the guy right on his head. It's a pain in the ass to do because of the god-awful controls, but it helps. But wait, don't you have to enter battle when trying to open the goal? Well, shit! Fortunately, it's very easy to run away from the last battle, so it's not as bad here. Now let's talk about the three riders. Remember when I said that V3 was the only rider in this game that was remotely decent? That's because he's the fastest in the game. Not only in terms of running and jumping, but he can also shove his opponents a lot faster. Ichigo and especially Nigo are painfully slow. So if you're curious enough to play this game, at least play as V3. I actually got pretty far with V3 and I actually made it to the next level with him, but I lost all patience with this game. This is quite possibly the worst RPG on the NES slash Famicom. In fact, I think it's a lot worse than Hyde Light and Saint Seiya. All in all, Kamen Rider Club is the very first Kamen Rider game and possibly the worst. You'd think they learned their lesson after this, but no. Just a few months after Kamen Rider Club, Kamen Rider Black Taiketsu Shadow Moon was released for the Famicom Disk System. This one sucks too, but for different reasons. Okay, I'll admit, as bad as this game is, it has an awesome intro with Kotaro's henshin sequence. In fact, I'd say it's pretty accurate to the one in the actual show. Now if you thought Kamen Rider Club played bad, prepare yourself because this one plays a lot worse. First off, Look at how slow he walks. He literally walks that slow in the game. I mean, shit. It's like he was in the middle of taking a shit in the bathroom, and when he realized it was an emergency, he left while his remaining shit was still stuck in his ass. I mean, for fuck's sake, nobody goes out and says, Oh, I'm going to save the world, and I'm going to walk really slow. It's retarded. Absolutely retarded! And to add insult to injury, they made the jumping here worse than in Kamen Rider Club. At least in that game, you could jump somewhat smoothly when you're in the wide open spot. But in this one, the jumping is completely broken. It's especially annoying when you're trying to avoid getting hit by enemies, as well as trying to actually hit enemies from the sky. And it's an even bigger problem when you're in a boss battle. Now this game isn't completely bad. At least there are stages where you get to ride your bike. And here, it's actually kind of fun. Except when you're fighting a boss, of course. I'm not sure exactly how many levels you get to use the bike, but I have a feeling it's very minimal. I didn't beat the whole game because, like Kamen Rider Club, I lost all patience with this fucking game because I could not fucking stand the walking levels with its god-awful controls. Also, the graphics look pretty crappy for 1988. The character sprites look okay, but the backgrounds are terrible. They look bland and uninspired. All in all, Kamen Rider Black for the Famicom Disk System is shit, and it is just as shitty as Kamen Rider Club. And it's a damn shame too, because Black is my favorite Rider series of all time. If you ask me, I think it's the best Kamen Rider series ever made, hands down. No other Kamen Rider or Tokusatsu in general could possibly top the show. But even though Kamen Rider Club and Kamen Rider Black for the Famicom sucked, like they say, third time's a charm. And that's especially true with the next Famicom game. 
Kamen Rider SD, Grand Shocker no Yabo. This next one is also an RPG, but unlike Kamen Rider Club, this one actually looks decent. The presentation looks great, the graphics and music are good, the cutscenes are pretty cool, you have a wide selection of writers to choose from, and it's overall kind of fun. Unfortunately, I can't go too in depth with this game because I could not find a translation or a guide anywhere online. But even with the lack of translation, I still enjoy this a lot more than the other two Rider games. So if you have some sort of guide, please let me know because I really want to play it. All in all, Kamen Rider SC for the Famicom is a breath of fresh air, and it's a sign that more good Kamen Rider games are on the horizon. With that said, we're now going to take a look at the Kamen Rider games released for the Super Famicom. The first one we're going to look at is Kamen Rider SD Shutsugeki Rider Machine. I absolutely adore this game. It's got chibi Kamen Riders riding their bikes, kicking the shit out of grunts, monsters, and other villains. It's like a mix between racing and beat em up and it plays great. And best of all, there's a wide variety of enemies so it doesn't get stale or repetitive. In each chapter, you get to play as a different rider, kind of like in G-Ranger for the Famicom where you played as a different ranger in each stage, only this game is actually fun. For example, you play as Ichigo in Chapter 1, Nico in Chapter 2, Rider Man in Chapter 3, V3 in Chapter 4, X in Chapter 5, Stronger in Chapter 6, Amazon in Chapter 7, Super 1 in Chapter 8, Z-Cross in Chapter 9, and Black RX in Chapter 10. And each chapter has three levels, so the length of this game is awesome. After you clear a stage, you get to choose which special weapons you want to use, such as missiles, rockets, and other cool stuff. Also, each rider has a unique ability. They can blast fireballs, turn invisible, and a bunch of other crazy stuff. But remember, use your powers wisely because you will need them during boss battles. All in all, great game, fun to play, graphics are great, Music is great. I highly recommend checking out Kamen Rider SD for the Super Famicom. It's awesome. Now before I get to the last Super Famicom game, I want to talk briefly about a Kamen Rider game on the Game Boy titled Kamen Rider SD Hashire Mighty Riders since it's somewhat related to the Kamen Rider SD game on the Super Famicom. Unlike the previous one, this one plays more like the classic arcade game Spy Hunter. The only difference is that this one isn't nearly as good. First off, you have a selection of 9 riders to choose from. That's all fine and dandy, but does it really matter in this game? I mean, I could not tell the difference between one rider from another during the game. Each rider looks and plays almost identical. The roads are annoying in this game. You will bump into things a lot, and you come into a screeching hall if you do so. Plus the enemies don't do much in this game, they drive pretty slow and they're just there to slow you down rather than try to kill you. Now don't get me wrong, I don't think it's a bad game at all, I think it's okay. I just think it could have been a bit better, in fact I guess you could say I was kinda nitpicky with this game. All in all, Kamen Rider SD on the Game Boy is something I only recommend to Die Hard fans. Now we're going to take a look at the last Kamen Rider game for the Super Famicom and the last Kamen Rider game we'll be taking a look at for this part. The game is simply called Kamen Rider and it's directly based on the original 1971 series of the same name. First off, the game has some awesome cutscenes and they are 100% faithful to the original show. And the title screen in all its 16-bit glory looks just like the one in the original show. In fact, they play the original theme song while it's on. As you can see, it's a side-scrolling beat-em-up. It may not be as good as the likes of Final Fight or Streets of Rage 2, but it's a damn fun beat-em-up. Why? Because it's the Kamen Rider game that fans want. Just playing as the writers, beating up and kicking the shit out of every single shocker, grunt, monster or villain wherever from the show. And believe me, they're everywhere. Every single villain from the original series is in here. There's also an original villain, but I don't want to spoil you. You also have the option to play as their human forms, Hongo and Ichimonji. 
You can transform into Kamen Rider anytime you want. There's no limit or bar or anything like that as to how many times you, you henshin, which is great. In 2007, I made a more in-depth review of this game. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out. All in all, a solid beat-em-up and one of the best Kamen Rider games out there. Now, here's a little trivia for you. This was the game right here that made me a Kamen Rider fan. I'm serious. If I didn't download the ROM of this game and played it, I would not be a Rider fan today. So I have this game to thank because of that. So that's it for Kamen Rider Games Part 1. Part 2 will be coming soon and I will discuss Kamen Rider Games for the Sega CD, Sega Saturn, and Sega Pico. One of them actually got an American release. Stay tuned.